In order for a network to work, we have to transport those bits and bytes. We're gonna learn how to do that right now. Hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Let's get going. In order for a network to transport data, something must change. Smoke signals, smoke on, smoke off, or a light on or off. We can communicate and have for many thousands of years in those ways. Networking is actually no different. It's only, again, these two states we learn about binary, uh, on and off, a one and a zero. So what mediums, fancy word for, how do we transport that data? The one that's most common is through electricity. Uh, now, it's not electricity you can see or you can feel, but it does go through what we call copper in order to communicate. And again, it's a positive voltage and a negative voltage. It's a one and it's a zero uh, going on and off. So that copper is typically through uh, ethernet cable, a lot of times uh, more commonly referred to correctly as category five or category six cable. But that is electricity going over pairs of electrical wire. Now those pairs have very interesting components to them. A lot of times they're called twisted pair. Don't worry about that right now. Just know that we are trying to transport information from one device to another. And one of the ways to do that is via copper. Another is via light. We, uh, a lot of advertisers you've probably heard say, get fiber to your home. Well, where I live, I can't get fiber to my home. But what is fiber? Fiber is like little wires, except it's clear and it will let you transport light. So it actually is flashes of lights. Remember on and off, on and off to transport those bits and those bytes. Now, a lot of people think fiber is faster. Again, a lot of the commercials you watch make you think that, oh, fiber is faster. And sure it can be, and it is, it can be. But to a home, copper versus fiber has no difference in speed. But what fiber is really good at is distance. So if you need to transport signals, underground, you know, in, in conduits and such really long distances, fiber is really awesome for that. Copper is typically used for phone lines and like in your home or in a large campus, if you're on a university campus or an office space, there is copper going from computer to computer. There isn't fiber going from computer to computer. There's no advantage to that, it just costs more money. Another one, uh, the third way, and the more common way that you're getting data right now is through pure magic called radio frequency. Uh, so when you are, you know, you have your phone, we'll hide the logo of this iPhone, oops, that this does not have an ethernet cable, right? There's no way to plug in uh, this, this Cat5 cable or plug in this fiber. So how is it getting information? It's getting it through radio waves, typically Wi-Fi or cellular. But radio waves are another medium, it's another way that we transmit and receive data. And I would say today it's probably the most common way that it's done. And it's got its pros and cons. Many of you have complained about Wi-Fi, rightfully so, or cellular, oh, I'm losing signal, but it's pretty rare that if you're plugged into a cable that you say, oh, this cable is bad. That doesn't happen as often. So you get that portability with the radio, but uh, the downside is, is that your ability to have consistent connection may not be just a, may not be as good as what you would like. So that's really it for this video. Not a lot else to look at, but just again, just to remember, there are different ways to send data different through different what we call physical mediums. So we have fiber, uh, we have copper, and we have this pure magic radio frequency in the air. Remember, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, because you're going to want to know more about this. I guarantee it. Thanks a lot. We'll see you in the next video.